sometimes it's moments of brokenness which create the greatest transformations. Times where fear gives birth to faith, pain leads to healing, and chaos dissolves into peace. It's in these times we often see God more clearly. For in our deepest turmoil, He remains faithful. When our spirit is crushed, He remains strong. When our moment is too heavy, He carries the burden. As gold is refined by fire, we too are often refined by struggle. It's part of growing, changing, becoming. Lately, the journey has been difficult. Our breath has been labored. Our steps uneasy. But we stand in faith, knowing who is leading us through this desert. The God of peace, the God of hope, the God of restoration. Good morning and welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's good to have you in the house of the Lord with us. Um, we're broadcasting this morning from my office and I just want to give a shout out to, to Bruce, our, our camera guy and electronic guru. He comes up with all these great ideas. So I hope you enjoy um, our, this temporary little worship space in my office spend a lot of time in here so it's it's interesting to, to share God's Word with you from this space. Hey we're continuing our series on uh, a future with hope and this morning I want to talk about God's unconditional grace okay and uh, and so we're gonna look at how how God measures us and so often we measure ourselves against someone else and uh, and I think Jesus has a good word um, to share with us about how God sees us and that we can embrace a future with hope when we, ex when we truly accept God's grace. Will you join me in prayer? Dear God, we give you thanks for this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that we can come before you just as we are to be filled with your spirit. And now, Lord God, speak through my heart, speak through my mind and my soul, and also through the music and, uh, and the prayers, Lord God, to draw us closer to you. And it's in Jesus' matchless name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. invite you to uh, listen intently to uh, Noelle Russell as she reads the scripture from Matthew 20 verses 1 through 16 and Ephesians 2 8 through 9. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, You also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came, and each received a denarius. So when those who were hired first came, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, French. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Noel, for reading God's word for us this morning.
Well, friends, as we go before the Lord in prayer and praise, I invite you to text me any prayer requests you might have. Um, now, it will be lifted up live on Sunday morning in our drive through service. Um, but I will pray for you um, through the week as well. So the, uh, the, the prayer request line is, is my phone number. Just text it to me. It's listed, um, I believe, on the, uh, uh, on the screen. If not, it's area code 614-313-1482. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, dear God, we thank you for this day that you have made. And Lord God, we will relax in it because we know that you are in charge, that our world, our individual and the whole world, Lord, is literally in your hands. And so, Lord, I pray for those who are having a really tough time right now because of the social isolation and the things that have been shut down and the social distancing, Lord, it's really taken a toll on most of us. And so we come before you acknowledging our sometimes loneliness, our insecurities, and we give them to you right now, Lord, because uh, sometimes it's just tough. But Father, we give you thanks that you came in the person of Jesus and Jesus knows what it's like. You know what it's like to be human. And so help us, Lord, during these, this very human, painfully human time, to, to continue to be faithful to you, to receive your grace unconditionally, and so that we may be strengthened, not just for our own benefits, Lord, but so that we could help make a difference in our world as followers of Jesus Christ. And we pray for those who are sick. We pray for loved ones, Lord God, who need your healing touch. And we also give you thanks for the good things that are happening around us. And open our eyes, help us to see you in our midst. And give us an opportunity, each one of us, to go where you are at and to be your heart and hands to those who are hurting. And we ask this in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. And now, friends, as we uh, conclude our time in prayer, I invite you to join with me in praying the, the beloved um, prayer called the Serenity Prayer. Let's pray. God, give us the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed. Courage to change the things which should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, just as Jesus did. Accepting this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen.
Now, dear friends, at this time, we'll receive our offering, the options to give by mail, um, online, um, or, uh, or just uh, dropping it off our, in, uh, before you now. So thank you in advance for your continued generosity to Livingston Church. join me in prayer. O oh Lord, forgive us for taking your love so casually and your church for granted. We need you and our world needs you and your church. May our gifts support your acts of love. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. All of us have jobs or had jobs at one time in our life. And I want you to imagine that you've been working hard for a company for 20 or 30 years. And you started with reasonable pay. And now that you've done well, you're making some serious money. And you're proud of your accomplishment. With your salary, You've been able to buy a nice house, provide for a stable family, and accrue funds for your retirement. This is the way it's done, right? And you've mastered it. So one day, the company decides it needs to hire a new round of employees to fill in the positions of people like yourself who are retiring. And they hire young men and women fresh out of college with bright hopes and little experience and no accrued loyalty to the company. And to your surprise and horror, the company decides to pay them what your current salary is. Would you celebrate that? Would you be general, genuinely happy? for these young newbies? Or would you indignantly stare in disbelief and suddenly feel devalued and mourn your company's unappreciation of your long-term efforts? If you honestly said, sure, you responded pretty much like most human beings would. I feel dis dishonored, disrespected. But friends, I'm here to tell you, as much as I hate to admit it, we draw invisible lines in the sand between us and our neighbors. And we measure our life in portions with an invisible yardstick. 
That's the way we operate in our human-driven world. Anything other than what we deem fair treatment feels like a slap in the face about everything that we've learned to believe in. Hard work, success, achievement, long-term goals, profit and gain and winning. Let's face it, we are people driven by challenge. We're not driven by gifts. We're, we want a challenge. And we measure our worth largely not by who we are and by our relationships. We measure our worth by what we have and what we've gained. Isn't that the truth? And it's not just limited to our jobs. It's the same framework we follow in education, in our vacations, community politics, and yes, even in our church and our faith. And it's uncomfortable for us in any area of our lives to feel that our long-term efforts and investment can be equal to anyone new, anyone's new input into that area of our lives. And as soon as something like that happens, out comes the yardstick. And we begin to figure out how this could possibly be okay. How could this possibly be fair? Friends, we've learned time and time again that Jesus' parables have significant shock value. But the one today must have sent seismic shockwaves down through the disciples' spines the day he told this tale. And I suspect, if you think about it, you feel the same way. How can it be fair that the owner of the vineyard should pay the new employees who worked only one hour and mind you, they paid them first the same wage as the loyal long-term employee who worked 12 hours that day. How can this be okay? How can we possibly feel okay with this scenario? The answer, friends, is one of the most difficult concepts that you and I face in Christianity. And that is it, this. God is not fair. Can you repeat that after me? God is not fair. That's a starting point, friends. You heard me right. God isn't fair. But do you know what God is? God is gracious. Can you say that with me? God is gracious. And the two are completely different concepts. Fairness and grace are, are different poles. You see, we are brought up in a world that to believe that to have value in life, we are to achieve, we are to achieve things. We buy into the achievement model. And that we measure our worth by that trusty, invisible yardstick that we keep by our sides. We all have one. So I want you to reach in your pocket and pull out the yardstick that you use to measure yourself against anyone else. Go ahead. Reach down in your soul, friends. Reach down deep. And now, you know what I want you to do? I want you to throw it away. Throw away that yardstick, that measuring tape, whatever that you use to quantify your value. Throw it away. Because you and I can't live by the rule of the measuring tape and at the same time follow Jesus. 
That's not how God operates. You see, followers of, as followers of Jesus, we live by an entirely different kind of measurement. Entirely different. So what kind of measurement do we live by? In order to fully live as a disciple of Jesus Christ with a hopeful future, we need to see that our values are very different. We need to see our neighbor's value differently. We need to see what God values differently. We need to see justice, goodness, mercy, human values differently from God's perspective. Remember Jesus' story about the hundred sheep in which he leaves the 99 to the responsibility of an assistant shepherd. They're not abandoned. They're just taken over. They're cared for by an assistant pastor. And every sheep we find out from this story has equal value. And every sheep matters to God. And God leaves, loves every sheep equally. And God is willing to leave the 99 in the care of the assistant shepherd while he looks for and cares for the wounded, lost sheep. You see, what Jesus is teaching us, the radical concept that, yes, all sheep matter, but this one sheep needs God's help right now. And so God goes after that sheep. And so, friends, God's sense of what is equal is based on intrinsic human value. You see, God's values aren't based on our achievement. God's values aren't based on our success and timetables or accomplishment. God is not fair because God loves each one of us equally as much and as one another, no matter what we do for Jesus Christ, or no matter how many times we have failed, God still loves us passionately, friends. That's called unconditional grace. The Apostle Paul describes it beautifully in Ephesians 2, 8. He says, For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith. For this is not from yourselves. It's a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. It's a gift. We don't earn it. And that's so hard because we want to, we, we're always earning approval. It starts from earning our parents' approval, then maybe our grandparents, our boss's approval. That's the way we live. And I get that. But in God's eyes, we don't have to prove ourselves to God. It's all by grace. And thank God for that, friends. Thank our living, loving God for that. Because all of us, at one time or another, are going to fall. We are going to fail. But that doesn't cut us off. We can still have a future with hope, even if we fail. You see, God's love, friends, is a free gift. Something that we are ultimately uncomfortable with, okay? Because we want to earn our gifts. We have a hard time with this unconditional stuff. Because it requires us to do nothing except to, except to praise God for His generosity, mercy, and grace. And to honestly, friends celebrate the gifts our neighbors receive without conditions, stipulations, or expectations on our part. We celebrate what God is doing in our friends and other people's lives, okay? And so, for us human beings raised on that achievement model, that is amazingly hard to do. I struggle with it at times, friends. But 
I'm, I'm convinced for you, for me to have a future with hope. We need to get rid of our fair and just expectations because that's not how, how God operates, friends. We need to throw away our yardsticks or break them, crack them, throw them away and be willing to place value, our value, in the way that God sees us and our neighbors, not the way that we do. And so, in, in conclusion, friends, all this, trusting God, receiving God's grace, takes a lot of trust, and it takes a lot of faith in God's unconditional grace. Amen. God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit enable you to embrace God's unconditional grace. Amen.